In this video, you're going to learn how to composite Scarlet Witch effects inside a DaVinci Resolve using the Fusion page. And using these techniques I'm going to be teaching you today, you can use this to composite any energy effects that you want. The best part is, all of this can be done inside of the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I want to thank Production Credit for sponsoring today's video, but more on them later. Now, let's get right into the tutorial. So first up is going to be to import your footage. Once you've done that and trimmed it up to the length that you want, we're going to need to convert it into a Fusion clip. To convert it, all you need to do is right click and then do new Fusion clip. I've already done that for mine. Next, we're going to want to head over to the Fusion page. And the first thing to do inside of Fusion is to track uh, our hands. So I'm going to go to the very first frame and do shift space and add in a tracker node. Alright, I'm going to add three tracking points in and position them all somewhere on my hand. So the reason that I'm using three is because this way I get a better track and I can also track the size and the angle of, the, of my hand. And now that I've done that, I'll set the adaptive mode to best match and then hit the track forward button. And there we go, once again, Fusion's trackers have nailed it. It's kind of scary how good these things are. But now that I have that, I need to track our other hand. So I'll do shift space and add in another tracker node. I need to use two separate tracker nodes because otherwise it would put it in the middle of my hands when I want one to be on my left hand and one to be on my right hand. So again, I'll go to the first frame and add in three trackers. Then I will position them on my other hand. And once I've done that, I'll set it to best match and track it forward. And once again, perfect. And now for one more track. I want to put three objects into the scene. One on my left hand, one on my right hand, and one in the middle. This means I'm going to need to track both hands at once to add an object in the middle. Sadly, I can't use the tracking data for my last two trackers to do that. So again, shift space, add in a tracker node, place one of them on my right hand, and another one on my left hand. Once I've done that, set it to best match, and since I'm on the last frame, I will track it backwards. Honestly, watching trackers in fast motion is a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. So now, we need to start adding in our visual effects elements. I'm going to be using my elements from Production Crate, which is today's sponsor. Production Crate has a huge online library of over 10,000 assets, ranging from music to visual effects assets, to textures, to sound effects, and way more. The best part about it is there's a ton of free elements that you can use in your projects. And if you want to upgrade to the Pro Membership to get access to the full library, you can do so for an affordable annual fee. Personally, I have been using Production Crate Pro for over a year, and I have always found the asset that I am looking for. Make sure you go check them out at the link below. So the elements that I'm going to be using are the energy effects. If I come out to my media pool, I've already imported a couple. This is the Sorcerer Fire 4 asset, and it is loopable. But the problem is it only lasts for 71 frames. So I can just come over in the media in and check loop, and now it will extend throughout my entire clip. I have one more of these, it's the Sorcerer Fire 1, and I will also check loop on that. Now I'm just going to spread out all my trackers here just so I have a little bit more room. And once I've done that, I can plug uh, my Media 2 into the tracker node, the first tracker, and come over to where it says Operation. Now I can select this and do Match Move. And what that'll do is it will match the movements of my hand uh, with the graphic, or the graphic's gonna match the movements, or the graphic's gonna match the movements of my hand. That's right. And as you can see, it is able to do the position, rotation, and scale. Now that doesn't look really good uh, right now because it's like all the way off to the side. So after the media in, I can do shift space and add in a transform node. With this, I can adjust its size and I can also adjust the position to move it over my hand. One thing that you need to keep in mind is you need to make sure that the media going into the tracker is the same resolution as the clip that was tracked. So in this case, it is the same resolution, but if it's not, just do shift space and add in the resize node and it will bring it back down to the right resolution. All right, but now that that's out of the way, let's add in the second media in, put it in the second tracker, and again, set it so it is at match move. Then I'll add in a transform, scale it down a little bit, and then position it in my hand. And there we go, that is already looking really good. Now let's go right ahead and add in the uh, graphic that's going to be in, the, in between our hands. All right, so here's my graphic off on, the, off on the left here, and again, I'll check loop on that, and then I can connect this up into the tracker node. I want to mention that I did make a mistake on that. That media in that I just imported is a different resolution, but I never put a resize node on it. I remember that after I finished the tutorial, so I just wanted to get that out of the way to avoid any confusion. Inside the tracker node then, I'll set it to match move, and again, add in a transform just so I can adjust its position. Now, none of the graphics match in color right now, and eventually we'll want to make it look red, uh, but for now that is just fine. 
So as you can see, all of these elements are adding in really nice and everything is being tracked perfectly thanks to Fusion's amazing trackers. Now what I want to do is make them look like they're being connected. I'm going to do that using these mist accent effects from Production Crate. Now, they're kind of hard to see because they're gray and they have an alpha channel, but if you do A in the viewer, it views the alpha channel, so that means anything that is alpha will be black and anything that's not alpha will be white. So you can see it just a little bit better here, and we're going to space out a bunch of these, making it look like it's all connected together. Let's start by doing shift space and adding in a background node. Then I'll connect this into the background node, and if I do color over my viewer, so C, we can change its color. So for now, I'll just set it to a blue just to make it match. And now I'm going to merge this up after the transform one. I can grab this and just slide it all over, but I will add in a transform node after this background, and I can reposition this so it looks good. So I'll scale it down and then bring it here uh, so that the mist is going towards the center. Now I'll do the same thing. I'll add in some more media ins here and connect them up, still going into the same background node. Uh, but this time in the merge node, I can just offset the accent a little bit, maybe move it up rotate it some so so it's just coming out as kind of like a spiral here and if i add in another one i can do the exact same thing i'll bring this one up add some rotation and go like that there we go i think that is looking pretty good again i want to go in and make sure all of these elements are looping just so that they don't cut out at the end all right now for the next one what i can do is just grab the output of this transform 4 and merge it up with the transform 2 and then in this merge, I can just adjust the uh, transform values to move it to the other hand. Okay, so now for making all of the colors match. First, I'm going to select all of this here, hit shift on my keyboard, and drag it up. And that'll disconnect it from the main uh, node pipe. Then I'll add a background node into this fat tracker here and set the alpha to be zero. Then if I connect it back up, and it'll automatically add an emerge node and it should look the same as before. But what this allows us to do is add in nodes that apply to all of the uh, effects at once. So that means I can do shift space and add in a color corrector and then just adjust the hue here and I can make it all nice and red. Now the middle one still isn't quite right so let's just set it back to default and it's just not as saturated as the first two. So let's add in a color corrector after that uh, node and then we can just play around with the saturation, maybe give it a different like little blue tint, just to try and get it to match up with the original ones as close as possible. So now when we tint it to any color, it'll all just match a little bit better. And you don't have to have this red, you can have it to be green, yellow, uh, blue, like a purple, like you can get some really cool effects by doing this. But I'm going to set it to red, and now what I wanna do is set up the heat distortion. So if I add in a displace node, and put it right before the merge 5, that's now connected. I can add in a fast noise and view it off to the side. I'll add in some detail, contrast, and then bring the brightness down just a little bit, and then bring the scale down as well. I'll add a pretty nice seed right that's like kind of equivalent to how much the energy is moving. And then I will add in the erode slash delete tool. Once I have that added in, I can take the output of the color corrector into the erode slash delete and view it off to the side. Now if I set this to linear, and now I can bring this up and it will expand the image. So I'm going to put this at like 0 0.04, all right? So that'll make it a little bigger. And changing between the different modes will give you different looks. I'm just going to keep it on uh, linear because I think that looks best. Then I'll take that as a mask into the fast noise node, all right? And then I can take that into the displace node. And if I bring the refraction strength up, as you can see, we now have some sort of like a heat distortion going on. To customize how the heat distortion looks, I can change the settings inside of the fast noise node to get something closer to what I'm looking for. Another good idea, since you get this like kind of weird texture caused by the erode slash delete node, is to add in a bitmap node and put it after the erode slash delete. And with that, you can add a little bit of a soft edge to it, and it will just smooth it all out and make it look a lot nicer. So this way, you can get away with pushing the erode slash delete node to be a little bit farther. Uh, and then you'll have more heat distortion. All right, so you can always change that later and fine tune it to something that you like. All right, so now I'm actually going to select all of this stuff up here and drag it up just so we have a little bit more room. And after the tracker three, I'm going to add in a soft glow node. And with this, we can just add a nice little glow to our, uh, our uh, energy effects. I'm also gonna bring down the saturation just a little bit 
uh, just to give it a little bit duller of a feel. And now we're gonna add something that really makes this look a lot better, and that is a lens flare. If you go up to the effects library and come down to templates, uh, fusion, there's a bunch of lens flares that you can experiment with, but I'm going to be using Lens Master flares from LearnNow FX. I have a full review video on it if you want to check that out, and using the code in the description, it gives you 10% off when purchasing. But it's really easy to use. I can just do shift space, add in lens master flares, and then I can start working on a preset. So I'm going to open a preset builder and make my own from scratch. So I'll start by adding just a glow, alright? And I will come over to the global controls inside of this. Then I can come in here, right click, do connect to, tracker 3, and then I will do unsteady position. And that should lock it right in the middle and keep it there. Now I'll change the global tint to be a nice red, uh, just like that. And inside the glow, I'll select use global tint. All right, so that'll blend it in really nice. And then I can adjust the settings like making, uh, adjusting its gamma, adding a little bit of that. I'll bring the size up some. I don't want to bring it up too much. Uh, but I can also play with the rays if I want to add some of those, ray depth. It's really cool how much you can control here, and how easy it is to use. But after that, I'll open the preset builder again, click on the glow node, and add in the anamorphic spot. Now that that's in, I'll come to the colors, and I'll start changing this to be uh, different variations of red. Alright, there we go. And now in the controls, I can play around with some of the size settings, uh, the scale, and whatnot. But for now, I'll bring the intensity down and enable the glow. Alright, and I have to have a very low intensity in this, until it kind of looks pretty bad. But if I just bring that down, as you can see, if I just enable and disable this node, it adds a ton to this effect. One thing I can do to make this a lot better is come to these merge nodes and just bring the blend down uh, to make all that, uh, just the mist look a little bit darker, or it's a little harder to see. That'll just bring more attention to all the other parts of this effect. And finally, I'm going to add in the grain node and put this after the color corrector. And if I zoom in, I can play around with the uh, grain settings here that it adds. And I kind of just want to match this to the amount of grain that's actually in the scene already. Uh, so let's bring it to about there. I think that looks pretty good. That'll make it look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so now that that part of the effect is done, we want to add some light on my skin and my hands uh, because that looks like it'd be pretty bright. Now, that sounds like it'd be kind of hard to do, but it's actually really easy. So first, I'll add in a Lumicure and connect the media in into the Lumicure. I still have that set to only alpha, so I can hit C on my keyboard to change it to color. And now I'll play around with these settings until I can just see uh, my skin, all right? And you'll still have some of the background in there, and that's just fine. And then I'll add like a little bit of a blur to it. I can play around with some of these other settings until it looks something like that. Then I'll add in the color corrector node, view it off to the side, and I can just add a little bit of a reddish tint to it. And if I connect this up, you can see it'll add a nice red tint to my hands, and I can play around with this and see what looks good. I think that looks pretty good right there. And then I'll add in a color corrector node, and I can just add a little bit of contrast to it just by doing a little S-curve like that. And then make it look a little more cinematic by uh, bringing up the blues and the shadows, bringing up the greens and the highlights, and bringing down the reds a little bit more in the uh, shadows. So if we view that, it just makes it look a little bit more cinematic. And after that, your effect is done. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to give it a like and comment down below if you guys have any questions. If you guys want to watch some more of my content, check out my Fusion playlist by clicking right here. But with that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.